This is one of the most famous opening scenes in the history of the movies. It is Orson Welles' 1958 stylistic masterpiece, Touch of Evil. Wait, wait, let's get straight. There was something wrong. Brass, when you, when you hit that, da, 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 pow, get right off and go all the way down, you know. Make it an obvious fall off. Good. It has been 30 years since Mancini scored Touch of Evil, but he is in rehearsal in Los Angeles to perform it again with a 90-piece symphony orchestra. It will be part of a star-studded event to raise money for the preservation of motion picture music. Touch of Evil is only one of a number of motion picture music excerpts that filled the air in concert in Royce Hall on the campus of UCLA. The event, under the auspices of the Utah-based Sundance Institute and the music licensing organizations ASCAP and BMI. The founder of Sundance is actor-director Robert Redford. When composers want to perform their film works, it's not often possible. Many printed scores have been improperly stored and in some cases tossed out. Of course, the music will always remain a part of the film itself, but as I think we're seeing here tonight, there's a very deserving place for this music in a concert hall. A great deal of film music stands firmly on its own, and the Sundance Institute is dedicated to helping preserve this music so that audiences can enjoy it live for years to come. In addition to Henry Mancini, other composers on hand to conduct their own scores included George Delarue and the music he wrote for Francois Truffaut's Day for Night. Maurice Jarre and the barn raising music for the film Witness. David Raxon and the familiar theme from Laura. And yum bum. Dun dun bar two, da dum bum. And... Other film composers were represented by their music, but conducted by the Sundance music director, David Newman. Down to a concert E flat quarter note. The 34 year old Newman is a composer in his own right, who became music director so at Sundance last year. It was out of the film composer's laboratory at the Case Institute yeah. that the idea merged for film music preservation, spearheaded by Newman. We thought that it was a really appropriate, good thing for Sundance to do to get involved in this and in, in basically trying to reconstruct certain things that, that are just gone completely and the various, various or in various states of uh, disarray and, and also to pr promote it, which is why we have this concert on, why we had this concert March 22nd which was, we really want to promote it. We want other orchestras to play it. We want the public to be more aware of it as an, as an indigenous American art form, which it really is. It really is an American art form. And, and a, a lot of the music works really well in a concert hall, even though it wasn't originally intended. We feel that it's our function to try to restore as much of this as we can to make as many people aware of it as possible so hopefully they'll restore because there's such a huge volume of it and to promote it to make you know to make it to make it public that this is an important thing to do the searchers is in the is a warner brothers movie and it's in the warner brothers collection which is in at usc so um, we found that through usc and we're able to acquire the the sketches um, which are which are here and from that, you can orchestrate it, meaning it's, it's kind of a blueprint where every person in the orchestra knows, you know, has written out what they're supposed to play. One of the first tangible results of the music preservation program will take place this July in London when David Newman conducts the Royal Philharmonic in a recording session of three scores. The recordings this summer will be done for the Telarc label, a pioneer in digital CDs and the liner notes will be over the signature of Robert Redford. For today, Jim Brown, NBC News, Hollywood.